All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast, episode 21. I am your host, Best Bot Kid Smooth. I got my co host, ILP, Lord Gaming Addict. What what's is going up? on, guys? Uh, I'm a little under the weather, uh, so you know, keep that in mind as we do this. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, wishing you a speedy recovery. Eat yourself a jalapeno, uh, a lemon, and a uh, some ginger you'll be all right in a couple of days um man uh i just realized you have you've never done the spin in the podcast or the clap no uh, the the spins usually for the videos <laughs> we got to open the podcast with the uh with the with the chair spin we gotta start the yeah. podcast with you facing the posters and the i ain't spin. doing that alone you got to do it too if i have to i do, do, do uh, i don't have wireless headphones well, you'll have to figure something <laughs> yeah. out. Like, this I, ain't wireless. I, I'll mess around and, and knock over the whole set. Right. Yeah, nah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. So, what's going on? A couple of things happened in the news today uh, in vi- video gamings. Uh, they're still releasing bangers uh, this year. But I think we finally got the last uh, major game outside of Call of Duty, which is I think is still what a week away or so. Um, what do you What have you been playing? What's occupying uh, your your time, Attic? And as I unfreeze this gameplay, my bad. Persona Five. I thought you beat that. I did, but I didn't kill the Reaper in the Momentums, okay. and where it's leaving Game Pass on the thirty first. I was like, I'm not buying this game just for that so i've been focusing on you know because i have to go through new game plus so that's what i'm doing right now so you are fully taking advantage of how game pass work the game you're working on a game that's leaving game pass in a few days you know what remind me remind me of uh doc dark he had uh he had to finish guardians of the galaxy until uh he and he beat it like right up into the moment the game was uh available in uh in the game pass because he it was either he was so far into it he couldn't just let it leave or he had to buy it so it, it, it's crazy that i do i actually probably should, I, I it's too late for me there's no way i'm beating persona 5 uh by october 31st um I'm, i think I, I i left the game off at uh palace 3 maybe um there, i think there's seven palaces and all really? i just beat the the fifth palace on my second playthrough okay Wait a minute, you think there's well, seven or there are eleven? The seven. Oh damn, dude. I feel kinda kinda stupid. You could beat it. You would just have to like it would be very hard. You would have to skip a lot of the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause I've been skipping the dialogue because I already beat the game once. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the game doesn't offer anything different in a second playthrough different. I mean I guess. Um it's like I, I want to, you know what I I want? I want for Persona 5 Strikers. Isn't that a little bit more freeform action? Or is it? Yeah. Still... yeah. So pretty much like what I'm doing right now is I'm leveling up. Because when I did the new game plus, I kept all my weapons and stuff. Mm, okay. uh, so I'm leveling that stuff up again. Like I need to get, <clears throat> I need to get to a level where I can, because I, I I do think that I could take on the the Reaper now with mm-hmm. the stuff I have. I just got to level my actual level up to be able to fight him. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. So, um, Alan Wake has released. Uh, I don't know where it's sitting at on Metacritic, but I think it opened up with 90s. I think it's probably settled down at a 89 on PlayStation, 90-something on pc and no review scores on the xbox i'm, I'm still even the digital foundry coverage kind of tripped me out a little bit um it, what's going on what are you hearing i mean i know you got your ears to the streets and these gaming streets uh you're privy to some information that i'm not i want to know what's going on like what's up with the the Alan Wake? it's like all the coverage was based around playstation for some reason it's uh that happens a lot when it comes to you know I didn't know this, but they have to to pay for those review copies. Wait, so, what? yeah, they, I um when I interviewed Travis on reviewing process, he said a lot of these studios have to pay for those individual games that they send out in review codes. 
Like, oh yeah, they, he, yeah, uh, yes, and it's been, and that, that makes sense. Okay, it's like a concession. It, yeah, if you are a a console manufacturer, you don't have to obviously pay for that because you know that's who they would pay. They got to pay that thirty percent that they would give PlayStation to them. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Maybe PlayStation was offering them a a deal on the review copies, or you know, just maybe it's just like, look, like I have noticed that when there isn't a lot of review on one particular system Mm -hmm. is because they're putting their best foot forward and they're making sure that the only reviews that are out is like the best platform that runs the best. But so, I mean, but we don't even have, I mean, digital foundry haven't even covered the Xbox version. I mean, there's a few other outlets that covered the Xbox version, like, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, open surprise. And I think, uh, that other dudes like from I, I think it's some um he's from like a Spanish like country that uploads them and both those had the Xbox running better than the PlayStation version and the Xbox uses I know Xbox have mesh shaders and I know that's a big thing about this game on Unreal Engine Five and stuff like that so I'm just really curious about that what was uh the reason they did that I'm I and I'm interested in Alan Wake but just to, between me and you. And everybody watching, I've, I've never beaten Alan Wake 1 or American Nightmare. I couldn't get, I, I didn't understand the mechanics of Alan Wake 1. Um, and, and, I, and I struggled with it. This one, I watched the the trailer, the, game, the recent gameplay trailer, which was at the other event we're going to talk about. Uh, that kind of spooked the crap out of me. So I don't, know, I don't know if I would make it through the game, even though it's about, the game is what, like, maybe they said, like, what, 10 hours, 7, seven to 10 hours, maybe? Um, I don't think it's uh, ultra long, but yeah, I've noticed that the trend on that, a lot of these companies are making like, you know, pretty short campaigns. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. As long as like the substance that I played was worth yeah. the money that I gave, you know, if I was entertained for like the whole thing, um, uh, it's doing very well. You know, I guess it does give to another argument on like, is Starfield going to be in that game of the year contender? Because like, there's another game that potentially could be there Mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh, now i think i don't know what's going on as far as like of how like is is, if these reviews is like are they very genuine are these games are people just you know it's something new so everything people are touching i was like oh my god this is great this is awesome this is the best game right um i i don't know it's like uh i now i don't have a reason to uh feel anything about alan wake i think it's I think the first one probably reviewed uh, favorably well. Looks like they made a lot of improvements to this one, and um, is is Sam Lake at his best? Um, but yeah, I mean, does it find its way to be nominated? I saw Paris recent list. He still had Starfield on his list. He added Alan Wake too, but I forgot. What, I don't know. What, ah, he removed Sea of Stars. That's what it was. He removed Sea of Stars. Um. So I, I I think they either they need to expand the list, but I I don't I don't want them to expand the list. It's like look, either Starfield makes that list or it doesn't. Like I don't want them to, because then at that point, feel it, that is the ultimate. You know they they bent the rules for Starfield, and, and it's just like look, it, if it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it. But don't don't change mm-hmm. a process that's been this way for years. Yeah, for your advantage. Oh man, like no, I can't really judge me. I, I still haven't um beaten like um because I, you've beaten Spider Man two already, right? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm still my son. This got to the point. My son is further than me in Spider Man two. Um, I played. We recorded podcast last week. And I think at that time I was a level twenty something. It's like when I play Spider Man, I play it long enough to like get a significant amount done. It's just that didn't play all week last week. Um, I started to play a little bit yesterday. Um, I probably won't get to play at all tonight. Um, and I'm probably not going to play, uh, tomorrow just based off the workload I got to do to prepare for Monday. I might play a little bit during a weapon will podcast, but I won't probably do any story content. I'll probably just do the remainder of like the little side quest stuff that, that I've, uh, unlocked. Um, but overall, like I said, I'm still enjoying the game. I've never got to play it. I'm literally at like one game at a time. Right now, after I get through Spider Man, I want to, you know, finish Assassin's Creed, um, and then I want to honestly get my hands on uh, Terminator 
and RoboCop game. Those are the two games I really want to get my hands on after I get through Spider-Man and uh, potentially Assassin's Creed. Have you been uh, looking out for RoboCop or Terminator? Is any of those games peak your Absolutely at all? not. Why not? Come on, I'm pretty sure it just doesn't. It doesn't vibe with me. Like <laughs> they're cool, and I'm sure the people that love them are gonna love them. But yeah, I'm not gonna really vibe with that, and that that's fine. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so uh, the major thing that happened uh, prior. So we had two major things in the Xbox happen. Actually, a couple things. I don't know if we so some more news had released post Xbox. Uh, um sells right because last week we talked about starfield being the number one best-selling game on uh um for the for the month of september uh it was the best-selling game on um xbox um as well as a uh, pc for that month um seventh uh best-selling game uh for the year to date we know that's probably going to change now with the you know release of um spider-man and then obviously uh call of duty probably impact its standings for the overall sales of the year um Xbox uh, had the uh, they this all happened within the same week. I think they announced on Monday that they're having a an event, um, and the event was on Wednesday. It was the Xbox Partners preview, where it was pretty much like a Xbox third party state of play, essentially. Right? Um, you got to do. I know you did a live event for it. You watched it live. I didn't watch it live. It happened in the middle of my work hours. I kind of watched the playback to it. But what do you think? It, it looks like right after the showcase, uh, the person that pretty much put that together, um, who's looking to do more of these, they tweeted. I followed them. I forgot the name of uh, of the person that's doing it. But what do you think of this whole preview uh, event that they're doing? And do you think? you know, this is a good thing for Xbox to do. Um, and how often do you think they should do this? I think that this is a good way to give out information on Game Pass. Yep. I think that they should do this every three months. Uh, if it's not first party, it's third party games coming to the platform. Big, uh, you know, big indies or big third party games coming to Game Pass. I think this is a very good format to use. It's it's like very Nintendo Direct like, which I'm okay with. Um, you know, I, I think they hit this out of the park now as far as like the content that was on this Parker preview didn't really, you know, uh, you know, vibe with me as much as it could have other people. Uh, but as far as like what we got, I actually really liked what uh what the format was, the pacing, you know, all these aren't supposed to appeal to everyone. You know, there's yeah. some of these events that it's just, they're not going to show the games that you like, but I, I like that they're doing more. Yeah. And I think this is more have to happen because it, eventually they're going to run out of room for third party in their events. You know, when you got a publisher as big as Zenimax and now Activision Blizzard, uh, their primary showcases literally could potentially be all first party, right? Um, so I think these, uh, developer directs, I think, uh, these partner previews are necessary as Xbox has expanded, um, with Activision Blizzard and, and Zenimax and, and the growth of Xbox Game Studios. I think it's definitely necessary. Now the games, what would you grade this show? I mean, we saw a lot of Yakuza, uh, Like a Dragon, which is looking pretty good, um, the I think North into the North. I, I forgot what the name of that with the little fox. They uh premiered that. Um, there was Alan Wake that had a you know updated tr uh gameplay trailer. Now the game's fully out. We kind of got a better look at that. Um, Robocop made an appearance. Uh, what would you grade this? Uh, the, the, at least the content that you saw. Uh, the content I give it like a like a, a C plus okay. nothing really at this event really. Yeah. I didn't like it. I'm going to be real with you. I didn't really care for anything mm -hmm. at this, even the like a dragon, which I'm a huge fan of that franchise <clears throat> with a turn base new uh, iteration they're doing that. Even that I felt like they showed that wrong. Like you show a side game and we still want to see st stuff on the actual game. I just felt like they could have showed us the main game and maybe spent, a shorter trailer of what we saw 
and that could have been after the main game trailer. What do you mean? And, uh, isn't that the because the Yakuza's are no, now. like a dragon. That's a that's a mini game. That's not the game. No, no. no oh, but the, what they showed us, they showed us some mini game portions. But like the the Yakuza's turned like turn based. Yes, and that what we saw was a mini game. It wasn't the turn based portion of it. Oh, okay. It, it's pretty much like an Animal Crossing. Okay. And I felt like they could have done better with showing us the base game and then showing us that because now someone like you you didn't even notice like now you know people that don't normally keep up with that stuff they're gonna think that's the whole game <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's that's true i mean honestly i i had again uh i'm i'm with you there a lot of games in the showcase did not really interest me there was nothing really big that it was like you know a must-have Obviously, Alan Wick was a nice surprise because they've been aligning themselves with, you know, PlayStation on a lot of their previews, so it was more so a surprise to see it. We know, obviously, it's coming to Xbox. Just that, it, you know, premiering on that, um, getting a, an exclusive gameplay look at it uh, was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Robocop, like I said, I'm interested in, in that. I think it looks good. Um, there's a few other things that they showed, but nothing, like, kind of blew my socks off or anything like that. Dave, Xbox has also been done a good job managing expectations with these showcases stuff. I was not expecting the showcase, period. So I guess that's why there's no, you know, we don't have like that disappointing um, as other platform holders where, you know, waiting for a showcase, you finally get an announcement, it's the first one of the year, stuff like that. Like this one was something we've, you know, we've had two other, three other showcases. You had the de developer direct, you had the, 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 the regular showcase, uh and then you had the starfield showcase you had tokyo game show um and what and now xbox kind of inherits blizzcon which is next week so i mean we've like you know they've been been spoiled with showcase and they've all been relatively solid but yeah i do uh, agree with you in terms of the content that was on there nothing really you know was something where it's like oh man like that blew me uh blew me away or anything like that um, I'm looking forward more so to uh, a developer direct, assuming they do it again in January. I agree with you. Um, I want to see their first party one, uh, the yeah. developer direct. And, you know, I want to see more on the Hellblade combat mm -hmm. and more on the systems that make up Avowed. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, like, so the 2024, again, it's, it's a... I'm curious to see what's going to be the main pillars. We knew obviously going into this, uh, going into 2023, that it was Starfield and it was Redfall. You know, um, Forza. You know, were the like the main things. Minecraft. We knew we're coming. High Five Rush being a surprise. I'm curious to see what's going to hold down 2024. What is really truly the big game for 2024? Is it Hellblade 2? Is it Avowed? Um, uh, I know T Towerborn is going to be probably an equivalent to Minecraft uh legends which is probably going to be the first game of the of the three to release but uh, i want to see more of uh uh hellblade 2 and avowed and, and if avowed because remember the conversation around avowed was a bit strange because they were talking about like pre-alpha early development um but the game was targeting 2024 um i'm curious to see if that still remains true and, and i want to know where all their marketing bucks is going to go to this year in terms for game is it going to be this is how you can determine if xbox first party is going to have like a, a, a major le release what's going to be their big game um it depends on how they you know advertise where that marketing dollar is going to go towards if it's going to be a first party game or is it going to be something third party that they secure into game pass um but um and i feel like 2023 is going to be a hard year to top but i am just curious to see what else happens in 2024 um you know do you think is is hellblade and avowed pretty much in towerborn i think we might get a surprise one game in there um maybe indiana jones like yeah, holiday you, of 2024 you did mention that um that you you've said that a couple times too that you would uh if, if there's gonna be a surprise it probably would be um indiana jones um yeah imagine if you know because i i even though i'm not the biggest fan of the art direction and the latest avowed trailer i mm -hmm. know that's still going to be a solid game yeah 
because Obsidian ain't never made a bad game, really. So, you know, that's going to be a decent game, hopefully. Hellblade, I think, is going to hit it out of the park. Um, you know, that Tower game Tower Born, is made by a very prominent developer mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, you know, I think 2024, if they can get those Game Pass games, it's going to be just as big as a hit as 2023. And I think Xbox has had a fantastic 2023. Yeah. Yeah, they they have they have to um, but they gotta open up strong. It looks like they're you know putting their marketing. It's good to see them marketing the consoles again, dude. Um, uh, I've been seeing that uh, those little teasers uh, with the with the star fill with the Xbox Series X. The power of your dreams marketing coming back is always uh, good to see because it's like all right, cool. I think, and, and maybe this is just me, but I do think that they're kind of going away from solo like. For the past couple of years, I think you would agree that the majority of the marketing for Xbox has been around Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think they're starting to pull that back a little bit and starting to market the whole brand, the whole ecosystem now. Yeah, and and, and that also says a lot because if you think about it, the preview program, Game Pass wasn't all that prominent. I think only Game Pass had like one um, game in there. I think everything else were just like standard buy games. Uh, st uh, games that you uh, purchase in my in my ex every game that was shown at the thing weren't game pass yeah that's what i think because the past couple events you know it went from half of them being in game pass all of them being in all of them being in game pass half of them being in game pass mm -hmm. and now it's just like a couple's in game pass and the majority of them is first party yeah yeah so if if, if that's the case you know what i mean and they look into like you know sell uh video games again obviously the, uh they hope people naturally you know flow into game pass but like i said they shouldn't you know you know lose out on sales at the expense of game pass you know if you yeah, got a see, banger sell it because cyberpunk isn't in game pass and they, and they and they advertise an app yeah here's my thing if you sell console that's most likely eventually going to lead into a game pass yeah. subscription yeah you yeah. know as long as you do what you're supposed to right that's most likely in the end going to end up to them being in game pass because what they're going to do is they're going to end up subscribing to a variety of things um you know the the vast games that's coming out you're going to eventually get one of them yeah yeah no that that's true and and i think uh back during the time i was ranting about starfield marketing prior before they kicked it off um i was like yo they don't understand that the only way you're going to get more Game Pass subscribers is if you sell more consoles. Sure, people can subscribe on PC. People can subscribe on uh, the phones and TVs. But realistically, majority of those subs are going to come from consoles. And they have to market the console so people can buy the consoles. And now, pretty much anybody who buys a console now effectively has to subscribe to Game Pass. Remember, there's no more Xbox Live, right? It's, it's Game Pass Core, right? And uh, Game Pass... Uh, it's Game Pass Core and Game Pass um, Ultimate. I think if I forgot how many tiers there is, but I think there's a three: uh, Game Pass Core, Game Pass Consoles, and Game Pass Ultimate. That's what it is. Um, so yeah, so by default, you know, if somebody buys an Xbox today, even if they don't subscribe to this, the the Game Pass, we know they're they're subscribing to the Game Pass Core just to get an Xbox Live account, essentially. Um, and so that's should have uh, wonders we know xbox financials is going to be bonkers the next quarter because they get to count all those call of duty sales uh what do you think of that sorry they're talking to what did you say i said um i i said um oh my god i mentioned the um, i was talking about initially talking about them marketing the console is in everybody who buys an xbox console effectively is a game pass subscriber because there's no more xbox live um the xbox lives is now game Pass. oh yeah or, you're talking about anyone that buys a console and yeah. want online and in infrastructure online they do have to get into that core yeah and, and not to mention the core does have a good catalog of like mm. games that's in game pass yeah like Absolutely. it's like a mini game pass yeah yeah it has all their uh first part it's pretty much the starter kit man like with the gears with the halo hellblade is uh, um i think the outer worlds is in there there's a there's a quite a few games uh uh quality games too first party games that are in that uh game pass core um and then i said uh they're gonna their finance financial is gonna be looking crazy uh next quarter because they're gonna be able to include all those call of duty <laughs> cells um 
into the into their financials. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how everything, you know, uh, plays out. But now that the Activision Blizzard deal has closed, you know, Bethesda has, uh, you know, released their first batch of games for Xbox and Starfield has made a lot of money. Um, Starfield was, I think Microsoft said, so Game Pass saw its highest subscription, single day subscription, uh, subscription count in one day to day Starfield release. Um, I'm curious to see how many subscribers subscribed to Game Pass during release. If that, it, for them to mention like, hey, this was like, we got the most subscriptions in a single day when this game uh, came out. Uh, what would be the context? What does that look like? I know it's hard to say without them releasing actual figures, but. You know, go figure. You 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 deliver good games and, and people come. Like, it's just like we've said this for the longest time. You know, you could have the subscription services, the console, the controller, the online infrastructure. It's the games that's going to get people to come. Yeah. And, you know, you get you games that can hit just like Starfield did. And you'll you'll see those numbers go up. And, you know, you give them consistently, like a good big game every three months with smaller indies between. They'll, they'll not only maintain that number, but they'll grow it. But it's like Xbox got to get that number good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely right on that one. Um, there's a... Oh, damn. These celebrities passing. Oh my god. Um, you ever watch Friends? Yeah, that dude passed away. I saw. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Um, but other than that, I mean, there was a big shakeup at Microsoft, right? And this comes off the heels of Sony also having like a a, a shakeup. Um. Is this now? Do you look at this as I see people talking about this and this like they saying it's positive? We know Matt Booty and Sarah Bond both got a promotion, right? Um, they're both head up like really prominent. I think to the point Matt Booty is now overseeing both Xbox Game Studios and Beth Zenimax. Um, and that's pretty much part of the integration process. What does this uh this shakeup mean? We know one of their key marketing people left. A few people got promoted. Phil Spencer's still the person in charge, but what does this mean? And who is set up to take over next? Is it Sarah Bond or Matt Booty? I was looking at it like it said Sarah Bond's over Xbox software, but apparently Matt Booty's still over the studios. Like that that makes no sense to me. Like does that mean Sarah Bond's over him? Like, like she's the one that greenlights games now? Like, does that mean, like, in, in Xbox, he, to me, it looked like he is in charge of Zenimax, she's in charge of Xbox, and then eventually they'll get someone in charge of Activision. I'm assuming right now it's Bobby. So I'm just like, what, where does this end? Like, what, what roles does Matt Biddy do it now at Xbox? Like, I personally feel like they haven't came out openly, mm -hmm. but this is the transition period, and he's going to be hands off entirely now with the Xbox, and that's going to be Sarah's job. Because to me, it makes no sense she's in charge of all of Xbox but games. Well, oh, so let me. I'm gonna try to see if I can find that organizational chart again. Um, I think Tom Warren had it up. Um, man, man, where, where's my likes? I think I know I liked an, an, an image that had it. But because I, I, I'm trying to get some clear, clear clarity on that as well, because this, uh, you know, a group of people. Yeah. Are they like equals or like who oversees who in the, in, the, in that scenario? Because she's over not just our, she, it's hardware and software. Like she's launching the next Xbox console, assuming she stays in the position. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So that's what I'm I'm really, really uh curious about. Um but you think Phil Spencer is gonna be more hands off. So we you think we see Phil Spencer less. Um like because Phil Spencer's always been 
front center in front of the camera and the microphone at the interviews and stuff like that. And even and the thing is, he, like, he because the thing is, he's in a position really he doesn't really have to be present. Do you think you do you think his uh um we see him more, see him less? I think it'll be exactly how you see him now. You'll see him for big moments that they feel like his presence needs to be there. Mm-hmm. But I do think you'll start seeing more Sarah Bond. And to be honest with you, we've been see- seeing more Sarah Bond and less Phil for the past couple of years. So you know, I don't know if that is just how it's going to be going forward or is we're going to see even more Sarah and less uh, Phil. Uh, you know, I do feel like we're in the last stages of Phil's career. Mm-hmm. I think he'll probably retire before the next generation. You th- oh, oh, you think he'll retire before the next launch to the next Xbox? Yeah. Uh, neither that or he'll retire right after their launch. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to be interesting. That, that, that will be interesting um, if, that, um, if that do happen. Because like, he's also like, he's in a, a major uh, position. Um, so that that yeah, how how do you how do you think the industry's gonna react to that, man? Just depends on who replaces them, you know. Um, I'm thinking that they're they're soling up Sarah Bonner to replace him at this point. Uh, so I think the chances of her, because to me, Sarah <clears throat> is naturally gonna go that because she's kind of she kind of has the job he used to have. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, like, if he retires, do they pick someone else? Because to me, I'd prefer them to pick someone from his team mm-hmm. that's got similar ideology. Yeah, like, that's I'd hate, true. Yeah, yeah. I'd hate for them to replace him with someone else, and we have another Dawn Matrix position. Yeah, that, uh, that's situation. the scary thing. Is like, yeah, it has to be somebody that's in that in that in that core, <laughs> right? Because. You, if somebody else do come, they come and shake up the whole thing. Next thing you know, you stay selling off for your Zenimax and Activision Blizzard and stuff like that. Um, I think so. Sarah Bond's new position, she's the president of Xbox, overseeing all Xbox platform hardware and software. And Matt Booty uh, promoted to president of game content and studios including now overseeing Zenimax and Bethesda. So there is uh, some uh, disparity between their roles, but they're more like equals. Um, uh, it's just that Matt Booty's focus is more so on the games, and Sarah's um, focus is more so as the platform as a whole. Um, so I would think Sarah's job is probably more important uh, the Matt Booty's at this case. And I wonder uh, what happens when uh, they, when Bobby Kotick leaves, what do they do with that? Does that fall under Matt Booty or do they just bring somebody up from Activision Blizzard? Uh, I think Matt Booty is going to be handling the Zenimax now. You know, because the way that Phil Spencer mentioned in that interview is like we want to make sure another red fall situation doesn't happen so i think i think Did he actually is, say that though uh in the interview that uh in the article i read it said that phil said that oh okay uh so i don't know if maybe i misread it but what i read from that is like look <clears throat> we understand that we messed up with that we needed to be more hands-on to that but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure from here going on out mm-hmm that they have everything they need. That's why I think, you know, Bethesda is going to run exactly how Bethesda's always ran, but mm-hmm. they're going to have they're going to have someone constantly above them, which is Matt Booty, that he's like I don't know if he's going to be doing quality check. That's what I think he would be doing. Cuz to me, if you don't put someone in that position when it wasn't in that position without him doing quality checks. Yeah. Cuz at that point, why is he there? Is he just there to be like what do you need cuz they were already doing that? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm curious. It's crazy because all right, so Pete Hines retired, right? So I, I wonder how much of his leaving also impacted what they did. It was Pete Hines a robot? Did he retire at, at a point to where honestly being a, 
avoiding any uh, a layoff, right? It is kind of interesting that he he left right after uh, Starfield. So it kind of makes me think that, like, was that your original intention? Or mm -hmm. maybe he didn't like the way Microsoft was handling certain things behind closed doors. Uh, you know, maybe, like, an internal struggle happened after Redfall 2 that he got some of the blame. So it's just like, I don't know. We'll never know the, <clears throat> what exactly is going on, but it's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, we shall, we shall see. Um, what else did uh, occurred? Uh, it's been a really dry week for Xbox. Yeah, for Xbox. I mean, yeah, it has. I mean, with the exception of the you know the preview and then the uh, the corporate uh, news. Um, you know, people are still. I know people are still uh, tweeting about. Um, you know, Starfield and uh, uh, a Forza, despite all these great games that are uh, coming out. Uh, but yeah, the year is pretty much almost over. We got one more major release to come out, which is Call of Duty. Um, Alan Wake's uh, doing good. Spider Man is doing good. Obviously, Starfield um, is is doing good and is is still getting um, uh, play time. I feel like uh, what game? There was like I feel like there's a. I didn't realize there was a game that came out, and I didn't realize it actually came out. Uh, Blade Runner, Ghost Runner Two. That is that out or am I tripping? I don't know. I've been so in my Persona bag here recently, just trying to finish that up that I kind of neglected anything else, and I've been under the weather. So today, like I, I slept most of the day. Damn, it, when I'm just like, I mean, do you know what? Uh, when you probably got sick or whatever? Not really. It, it, it could be a variety of things. Um, okay. It's just been a long week. No, I'm, I I know Grace was sick last week, so she probably gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, that's always a, a a scenario. Usually, when she gets sick, I get sick after, or vice versa. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, it's yeah. You're right. It was a light news week, so we just wanted to catch up on a few things. Hopefully, next time we do this podcast, I would have more games under my belt. Like I said, I've been like it, it's a weird time for me um right now um because i'm not a it's crazy i'm not able to game as much i'm i'm not able to produce the videos um because i'm not gaming um so i've been the really funny, like kind of low-key the funny thing is people always be like i get i beat this game i beat that game i've never really entertained that mm -hmm. that fight well, like how many games you beat this mm -hmm. year but if i were to count the games i beat every year it would be more than the majority of people that say that shit like i i I beat just about every game that's came out this year in terms of like third party. Mm -hmm. There's some that I skipped. I beat a lot of indies. I'll probably beat fifty plus games this year. So Yeah, I mean you 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 probably have. I think I'm at I'm prob by by the time that the year is over, I'll probably finish out with like twenty. I mean I go obviously I'm gonna finish Spider Man. I I, I plan to finish Assassin's Creed. I wanna finish this game. Um uh when Robocop comes out, Terminator, I'm <laughs> probably gonna get through those. Uh, I still have to get through Hogwarts Legacy, and um, oh my god, what else game did I end up that came out? I have to get through Hogwarts Legacy. There's another game that came out that was big that I either dropped or didn't even. Last year, <clears throat> I reviewed like 20 games, and that, and I don't, I only like put a video up for like half the games I actually beat. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Trin, you be beating like some of these like specific games that I wouldn't even freaking touch. Um, those complicated no, like ass RPGs, Persona. man. Um, I'm going to beat Tactics next week. You're going to beat it next week? Have you started? Yeah. No, I don't have it yet. Oh, I'm gonna, I, I do need to send an email trying to get early access to it. Okay. Well, I, I don't think I'm touching that with a ten foot pole. That's the, that's the even worse version of RPG than the standard turn base, in my opinion. Um, oh, that, that's my favorite. That's the funny part. Yeah, the turn base shit. Yeah, I'm uh, now. I think Xbox still got like this killer instinct thing to go. Uh, any idea or when the uh, <laughs> game of the year nominations are due to us? I think you you mentioned like I got to follow the game awards, but I didn't know if there was like a date that just typically happens. I would say. Within a week or two, we'll have the the nominations. We're about to be in November. Yeah. 
So I assume he's going to tell us a, a good month before it comes out. Then again, <clears throat> he might low key. Like we sit there and we say about, you know, Starfield not getting this, Starfield not getting that. I bet you he's sitting over there having a full panic attack. Like, what do I do? Like, because because the majority of the games that would be in there this year, they're all they're all console exclusives. Yeah. Like, there's all like Mario, Final Fantasy, Zelda, Starfield, like Spider Man. <clears throat> yeah, you're yeah, you're right. The, um, they like said is like the games like. I think there's going to be one uh, Hi-Fi Rush. I think there's going to be one game from every platform on that list. Mark my words. I mean, there should be. I mean, that's that's. They're gonna pick Zelda, Spider Man, Starfield, and the other three would be multi-plats. So that means, uh, so, so that if, my thing is, I don't think Zelda should make it. I think you nominate Mario. I think Zelda deserves it. I do. I think Mario's a good game too. So if they gave it to both, I wouldn't really be saying too much. But it, but... it would be nice to be like, all right, you get Zelda, Spider Man, Starfield, and then the other three multi plots because I wouldn't nominate Final Fantasy. Uh, the the multi plot games is what? B- Baldur's Gate. I think Baldur's Gate didn't even count though, but whatever. Baldur's Gate. Um, what is the. Uh, what other. I'd be interested a lot. I know, uh, uh, damn Hogwarts, or I mean, they, they'll probably nominate Alan Wake. It's a lot, man. It's a lot, man. We'll see, man. But again, Attic, thank you for another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast, episode twenty-one. We'll see you guys next week for another new episode. We'll see what happens this week. Um, I'm trying, uh, like I said, I got a lot going on for work, uh, but I'm at the tail end of it. So I should be able to get back on my grind, hopefully Thursday onward. I got, I take my test on Wednesday, uh, and then I get through my budgets, uh, I think Monday and Tuesday. So we're almost there. We're almost at the finish line and I can play some video games and talk about them. Uh, Addy, got anything to say before we get out of here? No, I got some, uh, good videos. I was going to stream today, but. I just I was in condition to stream and entertain for hours at a time. I was like, I'll stream next week and you know, really because I want to do a weekly stream, you know. I I I'll but I want to make it fun. Like I don't want to talk about news for the most part. There'll be a section in the stream where we talk about news, but it's not gonna be de- dedicated to news. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh yeah, I got to check out your recent stream. You did a stream last Saturday. Yes, yeah. and that was like a and I got like 110 people in there the that opening was like night. A beta, so. That was a, like a beta test. Or like a little, like yeah, a little it wasn't thing. even planned. It like really wasn't planned that well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm hoping I go in there with, you know, some good plans, some stuff to to go over. I think it'll be good. All right, man. Looking forward to it, man. As for me, guys, you can catch me on Weapon Will Podcast uh, every Sunday. I'll be there tomorrow. Obviously, playing Xbox Podcast Saturdays, Patreons first. Um, and like I said, I'll be back next week with some video content. Thank you guys for watching. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. I'm out of here. Peace. Peace. Well, how long was that? <laughs>